Hello, everyone. Here we are again. We're celebrating uh, this Sunday, the Feast of All Saints. So it's a, it's a great festival in the church, and it's one that really uh, gets us to think in different ways about the church and who we are and where we're going. So we'll be focusing on that today throughout the Mass. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist today, let's call to mind anything that might block our love for God or for our neighbor and ask for that healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God, our Father, source of all holiness, the work of your hands is manifest in your saints. The beauty of your truth is reflected in their faith. May we who aspire to have a part in their joy be filled with the spirit that blessed their lives so that having shared their faith on earth, we may also know their peace in your kingdom. Grant this through Christ our Lord, amen. So we're beginning today with a reading from the book of Revelation. I think sometimes this book puts people off. It's, it's highly symbolic, uh, but at the same time, it's a very beautiful work. If you can just get by some of, some of the imagery, find out what that imagery means. The part of the book that we're reading today is a vision of the throne of God. So around this throne are uh, the saints, uh, but they're identified in a very uh, interesting and very powerful way today. So I'm going to read the entire reading. Uh, it's the, the setting is the day of the last judgment. Everyone is gathered around God's throne uh, and uh, God begins to seal those who have lived in union uh, with his own life, his own will. So I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. He told them, do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they prostrated themselves before the throne. They worshiped God and exclaimed, amen blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. So he said to me, these are the ones who have survived the great, the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
So this is a very, really very beautiful, very powerful passage. That image of the lamb is central to this part of the book of Revelation. The lamb, of course, is Christ, right? The lamb that was sacrificed, whose blood uh, was shed for us. And he becomes that, that, that symbol of new life, of redemption, of uh, all that we're looking forward to in life. We see it in that image of the lamb. It's also telling us how to live, to live the same way to give up our lives for each other. So it's a very powerful image. The second reading is very practical, and it comes from uh, the first letter of St. John. And it's one that we all know is read very often at funerals. So St. John says to us, Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us so that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know, though, that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. And finally, our third reading today is one we know almost by heart. It's the Beatitudes. Right? This is the MO of the Christian. This is what a Christian looks like and what the inner life of the Christian is all about. So Jesus went up the mountain, he sat down, and he began to teach his disciples. He said to them, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice. And be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the past few weeks, the Sunday Gospels have led me to scrutinize the present state of our nation in the light of the Jesus message. Each week I grappled with the passage on two levels. How does the, God, the passage speak to the present situation of our nation? And then, what could the passage offer as a healing remedy? I was wondering what this Sunday's passage was going to offer when I realized that we weren't going to celebrate the 31st Sunday in ordinary time. Instead, we're celebrating the Feast of All Saints. My God, think about it. Two days before our presidential election, two and a half billion Christians throughout the world will be reading a scripture, the one from the Book of Revelation, about the universal judgment. So let's take a look at all three readings for this feast day. So the first reading presents the great day of judgment. 
It is about to begin. The visionary John relates that the Earth's inhabitants, from the most powerful king to the lowliest slave, have gone into hiding in dread of that day. Four angels are poised to mete out the judgment when another angel rises from the east and he commands them not to begin until he has put the sign of the living God on the foreheads of the servants of God. I ask you to think back to the scene in the story of Exodus when the angel of death is about to strike down all the firstborn males in Egypt. Moses seals the lentils of the Jewish homes with the blood of the Passover lamb to protect them from the judgment to come. The scene expands. John moves into a description of those gathered around the throne of God. It's a vision of the great and wonderful day when the reign of God begins. There are 144,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel and an uncountable multitude from every nation and race and people and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The poetic beauty of this passage touches me each time I read it. The world, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, has gathered at the foot of God's throne. They've been liberated from the enslaving grasp of the world. This is a vision of the new earth. The reign of God has begun. Its people stand redeemed and sealed with the glory of God's love. The second reading from the first letter of John continues this theme. John declares that God's love has made each of us children of the one God. He explains that the world, which does not know God, doesn't recognize that we're brothers and sisters, the redeemed offspring of God. The last scripture is the very well-known Beatitudes. Before I say anything about them, I want to retranslate the word blessed. The meaning of the nine phrases becomes clearer if we translate blessed by how happy. It's an exclamation. Blessed to me often sounds like a reward. You'll be rewarded if, but it's not saying that. It's how happy you are when. Right? So let's think of it in those terms. Each beatitude is presented as a couplet. How happy are, for they will. The first part announces a human reality or longing. Happy are those who are mourning. How happy are the meek. How happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. How happy are the merciful, and so on. The second part of each beatitude tells us why we should be so happy. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, for they will be comforted, for they will inherit the earth. The first line of the couplet is spoken from earth. The second line is spoken from within the light of the kingdom of God. In each of the Beatitudes, earth is linked with heaven. Just as the scene from the book of Revelation acknowledges the time of great distress, our battle against the negative energy of the world, so the Beatitudes acknowledge the longing of the human spirit for a world redeemed of selfishness and ego. On the Feast of All Saints, we celebrate our place in the kingdom of God. But we aren't just thinking about the future 
when we will have passed over from this world to the world beyond the veil. Our longing for that redeemed and healed world is the beginning of its manifestation in our day and our time. Day by day, the children of God confront the distress and darkness of our egocentric world. We're armed with a powerful vision of a new heaven and a new earth and supported by God's unconditional love. The feast day is reminding us not to settle for the world we've always known. There's a new redeemed world waiting to be born. As long as we feel powerless against the world the way it is today with its injustice, inequality, suffering and violence, we strengthen that old energy. Jesus' message in the Beatitudes is that if we look through the eyes of our souls, we'll see past the old world of selfishness to the new world, energized by love and compassion, caring and selflessness. Today we're being invited to join forces with the Lamb in redeeming and healing the world. Two days before our general election, the Spirit has put these scriptures before us. The Beatitudes are the MO of the Christian. We carry within us the seed of the kingdom of God. No matter how our elections go, we must not forget that. A new world, is in our vision. How happy are we? We gather our prayers now. So as all the saints throughout history entrusted their lives and desires to the Lord, so too we bring our petitions before the Lord, the source of our life and our joy. So first of all today, let's pray for the universal church. May each one of us be a source of healing and unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those in political authority. May the Holy Spirit shed the light of truth upon them that they may dedicate themselves to the service and well-being of all the people of our nation. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who are working to improve the plight of the poor and the underemployed, the unemployed, and the undocumented. We pray to the Lord. And let's pray for those suffering illness, especially at these, this time for those suffering from the COVID-19 virus and for all our brave and committed healthcare workers, we pray to the Lord. So let's just pause for a moment. Let's call to mind uh, the deepest prayers we have in our hearts. So Lord and giver of life, we bring these petitions before you in faith, trusting that you love each of us and desire our good. Grant above all that our faith may never waver and that we may rest our cares in your hands. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. So Lord, receive our prayers in honor of the men and women who live with you in glory. May we always be aware of their concern to help and save us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Toward her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church to whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, indeed the fount of all holiness. Make these gifts holy by sending your spirit upon them that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Holy One, we share your glory reflected in your saints. May we be filled with your love and prepared for the joy of your kingdom, where Jesus is Lord forever and ever. And we bow down our heads now. We pray for God's blessing. God is the glory and joy of all the saints whose memory we celebrate today. May God's blessing be with us always. Amen. And may the prayers of the saints deliver us from present evil, and may their example of holy living turn our thoughts to the service of God and our neighbor. Amen. The church rejoices in her children who are one with the saints in lasting peace. May we come to share with them the joy of the kingdom. Amen. And may Almighty God bless each of us, our families, and our friends, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Mass is ended, and we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you for joining me. Uh, tomorrow we'll be praying in a very special way on All Souls Day for all who have died this year. We're going to be remembering, especially those families who are suffering loss of loved ones at this time. Uh, and we really pray for all those who are ill in a very special way tomorrow also. So if you get a chance, maybe join us at Mass at 12 o'clock if you can. Uh, we'll keep the Mass fairly short so that you can get to work if you need to uh, run out. Uh, but again, it's a good day to gather and to pray. So have a good day, everyone.